All right, so we're here to look at Dalimar games. I would like to uh, start off by admitting I, uh, I have not done the interview yet with Dalimar as I record this, but I really wanted to make a video about these games. I like all four of them quite a lot, and so I just wanted to jump in and get the video uh, done so I'm ready to put the videos out when I do do the interview. So the first game, he's going to be playing four games. This first one is, again, Zoom. And um, the first moves... Uh, Dalimar will be our second turn player. Dalimar immediately goes for just high synergy. He has two ways to same in two. He also has a same in six. One thing I really like about this as a high synergy move is it sets up sames against at least one weak side of the card. It is not, for instance, obviously this doesn't set up the same sames, but if it went here, both would be facing the strong sides of the card. And what I like about this move is if there's anything in four, these sames, these combos, are likely to hit that card in four as well and do extra damage. So it's both setting up maximal same synergy, but it's also, based on where it is in relation to the center card, likely to do extra damage. Um, I should also say uh, we're going to see three wins for Dal and one tie. As always with these videos, I don't necessarily show all wins. I show games that really interested me. Now, here is where I think the most, the game gets really interesting, um, is Zoom goes here. And the first question I would have is, can I occupy five? And the thing is, it's a little tricky, right? Because if I occupy five with this card, I risk being comboed back. Now, maybe I have a combo at the end, right? But it's definitely going to get really complicated. And Zoom could go for further synergy here right? He does not actually have to grab the combo immediately. And um, for instance, if he went somewhere like here, setting up 5, 2, 3, 1 uh, to have 6, 3, 1, 5, 2, has 8. It's pretty complicated. This is actually a tie, but like the position's scary, right? We can see how it gets scary very easily. Um, 6241 does not risk the same combo. But now, maybe Zoom could do the same idea in 9. I think that's still a bit scary. And they can also spend time just blocking 4, right? They could do something like this. They have two safe cards. Dalimar can go in 6. He'll have two safe cards. But Zoom has a pretty good up-facing card, so it's going to be able to attack most things. And 3424 4 is likely to be an effective side-to-side -side sweeper. So it's, a, it's just kind of a tricky position. You know, if you go here, you accidentally flip five, and suddenly, again, you're vulnerable to combos. Uh, if you go here, I guess you're safe to everything, but you've also given up your threat in six. And uh, what would be the best way to deal with that? Probably still four. Because if they go four, you don't have the combo back. You do have captures. Um, but something like this, I think, is just leading to a tie. For instance, here looks like a tie. Yeah. It's a really complicated position. Um, there is actually a better move than what Dal played here. Dal went um, here. And the solver tells us that here was actually a win. Um, and, of course, one point is this combo. Uh, though this combo actually doesn't win here. Because of... Ah, 3, 4, 2, 4 has so many combo squares. Yeah. A lot of lines we can see where Zoom has a big setup in 9. So here we probably just block 2 first, and then we have the threat in 6 as well as 8. So I would guess 6, 2, 4, 1, and 2. This looks like enough. Is here doesn't set up 3152 to have four. Yeah, I think that's enough. So, okay, complicated position. Dal does it this way. And here, Zoom really goes for it. I think great move. Um, in fact, the only move that doesn't lose. And so I guess actually we can compare. We can see, well, let's just look at the game. Um, the only move that doesn't lose, a fantastic move here. And now, it's actually Dal that has to be careful. And one thing I liked about this game was I thought Dal applied tremendous pressure 
a really good first move, a really good second move, finding a way to pressure the opponent without even taking that safe-ish square in two. Um, also getting a card out of his hand, the 6-2-4-1, that doesn't land in any of the combos that we analyzed, right? It's a card that was good to get out of his hand. He found a nice way to do it. But Zoom really turns the game around here and makes it, I think, really tricky to hold because there's still a lot of combo tension. For instance, if Dal plays in two, he's just set up to hit him back in six. Um, is this even the best way to do it? No, it's this way, right? Because you want to keep the side-to-side -side sweeper. Um, right, because he set up both cards to have the combo there. Uh, if he did it this way, he gives up the tie. This is where I was getting confused in my head. But uh, he does it this way, and suddenly Dal loses. Um, also because it flips that extra card in three, I guess that's the key. Yeah. Um, so it's really hard to occupy two, and if you do something like this, whatever you do, because five hits four, hits one, that will hit two, and just everything is getting comboed, right? And you don't have a way to play in two that doesn't flip five. And because you don't have the combo back in eight, six is just going to be devastating. So there's nothing in two. There's also, I believe, no tie in seven. For instance, if we start with something like this, I think we land here. And the problem is, whatever we do, it flips five, and the five, two, three, one has the combo both ways, right? Dal can't not flip five. Every move here, even, you know, with the one facing in or the four facing down, is going to flip five. And when that happens, this is going to combo back enough to win. So really tricky position, really easy to blow this. And I liked this game because really complicated, fun formation. And I think Dal found the most comfortable way to tie, correctly realizing six has to be blocked, even if it gives up two. And importantly, in two, they can combo five, but they can't combo five while taking three. And I thought this was really good recognition. Or I guess they can, but if they do, they have to give up their side to side card. Sorry, I'm a bit muddled today. And Dal plays in eight, and they play in seven. And I think this can safely be said that both players held the tie. Both players were under a lot of pressure. Dal has to find this idea in six. I think there might be a tie in eight as well. But, you know, this is, this is a really tough tie to find. This is a fantastic move from Zoom in nine. Dal realizing that four was the critical square, not two, is a really great understanding here. Um... And actually, that's one of the cooler things I think Dal does this game, is he continually, first he sets up max synergy for himself, and then he starts just blocking whatever square Zoom has the most play, right? Dal has nice play in two and six, because he set that up. So he blocks four, a square where Zoom has the plus, but Dal doesn't. And when Zoom plays really smartly in nine, Dalamar sees, now six is a problem. That's the square I'm getting comboed worst, and he blocks there, right? And so I thought just really nice realization on all fronts. Very nicely played game. And we're going to move on to the second game. And our foe will once again be Zoom. So I haven't seen them play a lot. But every time Dalimar and Zoom have played, I've found the game uh, fascinating. And I wrote the cards down wrong. Uh, do, do, do. Oh, I think this is correct, but I really don't want to uh, blow this one because I love this game. So uh, this may be, may be a re-record in a moment if it turns out I have the cards listed wrong. But I also don't want to slow down too much to go check because that will absolutely ruin the video and I cannot edit stuff. So we're going to hope and pray. And uh, this is just, I think, a really nice game. So Dal is our uh, first turn player, and this is the only game he will go first. And he spots, here's a corner your hand cannot deal with. Uh, 9112, like most rares, is a liability. And this is just something that Zoom can't attack immediately and is really hard to set up against. You know, something like 7344 and 5 sets up a threat in 8 with 5373, but sets up no threat in 4. 
and doing a quick look through. Yeah, there's just the only way to set up a threat in four is five, three, seven, three, and five, setting up six, six, two, four. But that doesn't set up an accompanying threat in eight. So already just a pretty difficult position for Zoom, who I think plays a very rational move. I'm never going to threaten your card, so I'm going to play a strong corner of my own. And in fact, Dalimar played a really high pressure starter, and this is one of the, you know, only about, only slightly under a quarter of the moves tie. This is one of the ties, and it's very logical. Because it says, I have this card, I don't care about threatening an eight, because I'm never going to anyway. I'm safe to nine. If you take me from five, you give me action in four. Um, or... What is the idea here? Yeah, you give me action in four. And even though this can be comboed, no, not this. You give me this safety in four. And apparently you can just about survive. Okay, that's tricky. I, I might have gone in five here. Um, nope, I put the hands in wrong. I duplicated cards for, uh, for Dow. I didn't fix it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I knew I was fucking up. Uh, apologies for the language. Um, let's try again. Let's try again. We got this. We got this. All right. Dal finds a safe starter. Zoom goes in eight. Again, noticing I don't have a threat in nine. There is the possibility to take from five, but actually, apparently, there's a lot of ties here now that we've not given Dal two, four, six, seven ones in his hand because now four is safe, right? You get a, the card in eight, but I get a card in four in reply. And this turns out to be enough to tie here. Um, and you don't have a capture in nine. You also don't have safety in nine, right? Um, with this seven down on the five, three, seven, three, or even the six down on the two, six, six, five, Dallas, no safety in nine. So I think this is a really nice, rational response from Zoom. Dal blocks four, which makes sense, locking in your own card. He doesn't really have a way to take advantage of nine being a potential safe square. He doesn't have a good play there. So I think blocking four while setting up a same in five does something useful. It makes sure to lock in a card just in case some setup happens, and it sets up a way to attack a Zoom's card. Note four, six, seven, one, and five is also more of a threat now, though you'd rather play the same because four was the problem, right? We kind of wanted to play five, but that gives them safety in four. So if we block four first, that seems an appealing way to do it. And this applies enormous pressure. This is an incredibly difficult position for Zoom to play. Uh, there are two ties here. I suspect I would not find either of them. Really tough position. You can't really play nine because anything you play in nine is just comboed into oblivion. Uh, you don't really have appealing stuff in one. This is probably the most appealing, but I think they just go in five. In fact, every card in five hits pretty hard. You have no recapture in nine. Uh, what's the best way to do it? I would think here, but it's a little annoying. It's hard to recapture and easy for them to capture. It could also be here. I'm not sure. Tell me. It's this way? Okay. Um, so really hard to go in one. Hard to go in five. The solver says five is the best, but that's a hard move to play. Uh, Zoom does, I think, again, a really rational thing, and it's a little bit of a weird looking move, but I think it has a logic to it, which is what's the worst card in Zoom's hand? It's 9112. Ever since the starter, it's never going to have any targets, and he just gets it out of his hand. And he says, if you go in two, I get to go in five, I can at least lock in that card in four. If you go in five, maybe I can go in two and at least lock in 9112, which is otherwise just this garbage card in my hand. And in fact, Dalamar here has no win in five. This is a really clever move. If Dalamar does it this way, then Zoom can tie by blocking two. I don't think it matters too much which way, but the card in one is gonna be safe, the card in two is gonna be safe, the card in five is gonna be safe. And this is essentially, I believe, the problem with any move in five is against all of them, uh, Zoom can just create this nice wall of safety and has this really nice chance to tie and can hold this game. So the key trick Zoom played 
is find a clever way in one to make five not work. And what I love about this game is I think Dao found just this incredibly elegant win here, where his cards just dominate the whole board. And his move is here. I like this on so many levels. One, I really like moves that split up the board. So I now, in my mind, the board is now a pairing of the squares two and three and the squares five and nine, right? Five and nine are the obvious pair, but that because those are so clearly paired, because when someone plays in one, it's going to be so powerful to play in the other because it will have last connection with eight. You know, no other move will be able to touch eight after both those squares have been played. It's easy to pair those. And so because those are paired, two and three make this natural pair. And Dal has perfect cards for both of them. It sets up such beautiful synergy. Five, five, four, six was really good in five. Now it is perfect in nine as well, right? It's perfect in both five and nine. It can land in either of those squares. It can never be comboed in either. Despite, you know, potentially you could imagine a situation where it would be with the specific numbers, it never is. It's perfect for those squares. And one, seven, six, four, and two will of course capture one and will capture anything put in three. And one, seven, six, four, and three will now capture all of Zoom's hand in two, right? Because it already overpowered the, the threes, and that four facing up means it can also plus the six. I think this is just a gorgeous move, and it's easy to just play out lines. Zoom can't really play nine because the combo hits too many cards, and one, seven, six, four is still a sweeper at the end, and nicely is now set to cover sixes. So Zoom can't play in nine. If Zoom tried to play in five, um, well, five's not going to do much unless you at least grab the card in two. But Dal's already five five, and again, this one seven six four just sweeps everything up top, right? We have this perfect pairing. Any move in nine or five, five five four six goes in the other, and one seven six four sweeps the top. Similarly, and Zoom ends up seeing all this and goes up top, trying to lock in his card. Um, any move in two can be met, I think, in three, right? No, it can't. Zoom found a clever option because he set up this plus in five where he survives. So Dal, even now, can't quite play on autopilot, but he correctly finds he has this combo going up eight to two, and Zoom has nothing. Captures the two cards he can, and Dal wins 7-3. So I thought, really nice win by Dal. I just love the move in six. When I was watching this, uh, I was just so excited to see this move. I, I was looking at it when watching, and I thought it looked nice. I just really liked the, uh, the geometry of it. And whenever you look at a game and think, wow, that move's going to be really cool if it happens, it doesn't ever happen in my experience, or very rarely. And it's nice to, uh, to see a game where just... A lovely move is made and the board is just perfectly divided where these two cards are just so perfect in the resulting position and that's due to this card fitting really nicely here but it's also due to Dalimar's move in four set up so much of his hand to play well in five that it was easier for him to have these future combos right it is much easier to find a, com a huge combo move late if you've also found huge combo moves early and I think in both these games against Zoom, Dal has had a really nice eye for sames and pluses and getting them to function nicely. All right, we're on to uh, game three. This will be against a kind of unknown player, not all that good, uh, named Turds, that we will you know, obviously crush like a bug, but uh, we'll do it in elegant fashion. And with a hand that... Uh, it's not visibly very appealing. This is a level 5-6 game, which can often be quite messy. And we'll see how Dal pulls it off. He's got second turn again. So you can see he has 8-3-6-5, which is kind of an awkward up-down card. 5-7-3-6 I always find a little awkward. Some decent corners, some decent directional balance, but not a hand that jumps out. Turds has some awkwardness with the 2-6-8-6 and the 2-6-7-6. Uh, I'm kind of surprised he didn't start something like this. I know it's a little vulnerable at some point to being captured, but the uh, the 2676 and the 2686 function pretty well together. 
Turds goes for the big corner. And I think in some ways this is very logical, but also Dal plays against it really well. So the first thing to note is Dal has the capture, but Turds has the capture back. And if Dal somehow did capture the other way, Turds would have the capture back that way too. So we have a strong corner starter where we have a card that recaptures both directions. I think the reason I kind of functionally don't like this move, um, sort of aside what happened, though related to what happened, is neither of the recapturers, neither of 5754 nor 7544, can ever be set up to have the other capture as well. It's just impossible, because 8 plus 5 equals 13, so the 4s would need 9s, and 9s don't exist. And the 5754 would need an 8 facing up, which I guess if Dal really wanted to oblige you with could happen, or a 9 facing to the right, which can't happen. So you're never going to have a card able to perform double duty. That's not a huge drawback, but it can be a little drawback. It's only a drawback, though, if Dal can threaten it from both ways. Because if he can't, then next turn you just block whichever way Dal does threaten it from, and you're fine, your card in three is locked in and safe, and you're doing great. The second thing about it, though, is you don't have an eight facing to the right or facing up. And that means if Dal has a threat in either of two or six, it's really hard for you to ever block the other, because, you know, right now Dal is blocking two. And if you ever play in six, not only do they take, but they flip extra cards. And so, Dal, very reasonably, I tend to be a little down on center replies to starters in general, but Dal uses up his capturer to set up more synergy, but importantly, none of it is shared in Turd's hand, and now Turd can kind of never go in two or six, or it's really hard to go in two or six. I think there's, again, just very few ties here after this move. I think one plan is just to give it up immediately, to just say, I cannot go in two or six, right? And not be comboed. So I have to give up the combo now before it will do more damage. So I think it's possible that something like this um, is one of the tying lines. In fact, here it's winning, so Dal would have to play a different move. But I think going in two immediately does tie. That looks like one way to kind of try to diffuse it. Because the more cards are played, the harder that combo is going to hit, and the less time you're going to have to respond, right? If you're going to play in two, you need to still have three open. The more moves are played, the more likely three is blocked. If you play two, you need it to not flip extra cards. You need to have a turn left to go after. It can't happen on your last move, or your second to last, right? So... So one idea is to get rid of it immediately and try to get rid of the tension. Um, but if you don't, it's just really hard to play around because Dal now has um, 4865 to go here, and he has 8365 to go here. And it's just really hard to play around this because your big corner kind of works against you. This is actually one of the reasons I'm pretty down on big corners enclosed is because I think they can be really hard to play around because you have to be so worried about your own cards getting comboed. Um, and one reason why in hand games big corners often become better is because in hand games often the big corner comes with a paired card, right? If you have Squall and you have Cypher, then you can play Squall as a corner because you always know if you're really scared of combos, you can play Cypher next to it and the combo will never flip Cypher as well because Cypher will always match Squall's numbers or vice versa. But this can be really hard to play with and I think Dal recognizing I want to set up in five such that Turds doesn't have two or six is, is very powerful here. And, you know, there were other ways to try to play this, right? You could play something like this, saying, I already have two, I want to set up to have six. But I think going in five really just makes it tougher, right? Because everything's going to revolve around five. Everything's going to revolve around this corner. Turds goes in the far corner. He sees, um, I've got my recapture here, I've got my recapture here. The 2686 is better than the 2676, so I'm going to get the worst card out of my hand. I'm going to set up a plus and eight. I'm going to need some combo power to fight against this, because if you have two and six and I have nothing, I need something. And after this, Dal apparently has two winning moves according to the solver, 
one of which is, uh, I think, this, which uh, we're going to ignore because this is not very human. Um, but Dal finds the really human response. Okay, so what are you thinking if you're Dal? How do you find the other winning idea? We want to leave two and six open because as soon as Turds lands in two or six, we're going to crush him. So we need to keep 4865 and 8365 in our hand. We want to look for something useful to do with 7653 or 3487 that does not occupy 2 or 6. So Dal says, aha, I have safety in 8. I can do something very useful, because obviously safety is incredibly useful, while leaving the critical squares open, right? And that's something so big about having combo potential, is the longer you can leave it, the more powerful an effect it is in general. And often, the longer you leave it, the more likely it is to be blocked. But here, he has created so much combo synergy that neither of the two squares can be blocked by turds. It is already too late. And I also think eight is a kind of tricky move to find because you're giving up four for free, right? Not only can turds go in four locking in seven, but turds can go in four safely, and he does. The very rational move. And here, it's tricky again, right? Dal again has to make a very precise move. The instinct is to get this card out of our hand, but how can we do it usefully? You know, we can go here, and then they certainly can't go in six because we combo them to death, except that now they can. Turds has made another clever point. Not only is four safe, not only does it defend seven, but Turds can go here because if you hit him with the combo, you walk into a combo back. So it's hard to find a use in nine. And I think that move, yeah, that move is losing. If you go in six, you get your tie, right? Eight is safe, six is safe. You know, they probably play it this way. And I guess you get your tie this way. But you're not getting any more than a tie. And you still don't have two very well. The problem is not only did turds, you know, is four safe, is seven safe. But also, two is no longer something Turds is afraid of, as long as one is open. And so Dalimar correctly recognizes, now we switch things up. Turd says, I had this idea, we had two and six controlled. They could never touch them, I could save them for the end and hit them really hard. But two is now covered, so two is not as valuable to keep open. And Dalimar again, he spots safety, but just as importantly, he recognizes Two is a square I can now occupy. And you've used up seven, five, four, four, so you no longer have that threat in six. And this is also a move where you have to do calculations because you're just walking into this. But if two is comboed, it will flip five. And if it flips five, your counter combo is devastating. So it has to calculate a key line and really has to understand how to play with the combo squares in the position. I really like this move. I think it's, it's the only winning move here, but I think it's also just a very good move. Turds plays in six, going, hopefully six is blocked. If he gives me one, at least I get that. But Dalimar correctly blocks one and walks away with a 6-4 win. Again, really good game. I think every move of Dal's is just perfect here. Uh, the move in five, I think, is just this fantastic high-pressure response. The move in eight is perfect, one of the two winning ideas, but the very human one and a very strong one. And giving up something that looks really strong in four, and then having suddenly the kind of two six plan does not work so cleanly, but noticing, ah, they gave up their card for six, and I don't need, I need to find a way to still make two work. And he does make two work because he hits the combo back. And so that requires calculation, nice understanding of the position, and a really deep move of, and move an eight on move four. So I thought that was an awesome game. And we have one more game, which is the... So we've done, um, I thought, the most interesting game was that first game versus Zoom. I just thought the formation was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed seeing that game. The most interesting move... I think in the second game against Zoom, that move in six out of the L was just gorgeous. Uh, the kind of best overall game, I think, was this win over Turds. I think just every move he made was not just like, you know, really good, 
and like you can come up like the ai will tell you might tell you you know 10 different moves tie and that doesn't differentiate between the 10 but i think not only did he play a move that was always the best result he could get but made the best move of that type each time and our final game is his best result um so this is from clan league this is his win over akiyama in clan league that really put twin moons in a great spot Sadly, they did end up losing the matchup, but they were down one and a half to a half. It looked like they had bad matchups remaining, tough matchups, very hard to come back. And Dal pulled them back against Akiyama uh, in a really clutch victory. And so I think this is, the, this is the most important game Dal played, and boy did he bring it. He's got second turn again. And this, the game does not start out particularly auspiciously. This is, I think, a very difficult starter for Dal's hand to feel comfortable meeting, right? There are only two cards that attack it, and they are his two highest level cards, so they are quite risky to get rid of early. Also, if you use either of them, you immediately surrender so, surrender so much safety, right? And it is less risky for Akiyama to use it in reply because he is achieving such a big thing. Suddenly, 9 is safe and 6 is safe, right? And Akiyama still has a threatened 2 at the end there. So it's really hard to take that way. It's even harder in some ways to take this way. It gets comboed, or Akiyama can leave that open for a bit and maybe just recapture. Um, maybe not. Maybe that's too much. Okay. But that's scary to play because you can walk into combos. Maybe it's okay. Maybe you have a decent L, but that's pretty scary. So just immediately, I, th I think this is a good starter. I think this is a tough starter to meet because your play in two walks into combos, your play in six walks into free safety, um, and both moves are punished by the same card, right? And that's an issue because that means as long as Akiyama has 5-4-8-A in his hand, it's really hard to attack his starter. And if it's just that one card, it makes it easier for him to play out the rest of his hand because all he needs to do is hold on to one card. If it was two cards and you can place something that, oh, one of his cards needs to be played now, suddenly he won't have something covered, right? You can overwork his card. This is a common chess thing of like, if one bishop is defending two key squares or two key pieces, and you put a little more pressure on one of them, maybe the bishop has to come over to make sure it's protected and suddenly it can't cover both and the other one falls. There's lots of situations where something sort of is trying to cover too many things and can't really pull it off. And I think this comes up in triple triad too, where you have a card that's suddenly needed in too many spots and you have other cards that are ineffective in all those spots. And as soon as they force you to play in any one of them, you have to use the card and suddenly the rest of your hand is terrible and you don't have any control of those other spots. And sometimes this is, you know, sometimes this is because one card is on too many duties, but it also can be because every card in your hand has only one square it's good at, right? And suddenly one of them has to be used and none of the other cards can cover for it at all. It's more a thing about having a card that has a unique effect and no other cards can cover for that effect. And if that card is forced out of your hand, you can be in trouble. But because 548A covers two squares, you're really free to use the rest of your hands here. Don't know if that made much sense. Let's get back to the game. Dal ends up making a move pretty similar to one we saw from Zoom, which was earlier saying, your starter was strong. I have trouble dealing with it, so I'm not going to. I'm gonna start using up a card that has weak directional power towards the action of the game, and potentially I can start building from. So Dal goes here. And if a move like this, taking the combo, I think Dal just looks to take something back. You know, I think... Eh, this is tricky. I think this would have been a good move for Akiyama. Let's see what the solver says. Yeah, this is a tough position. It thinks he has to go here. I was thinking more eight, but... The problem with eight is you do have this threat in five with one nine a four, but there's the same wall in four with five four eight a, so it's tough. Ooh, this could have been tough. But it says, I'm gonna get a card out of my hand that's not gonna be useful in the resulting game. 
I'm going to give up play against your starter, but I'm also going to start making real threats. One of the reasons I think 9 is a good move is because suddenly um, Dal threatens something like 9, 5, 2, 9, and 9, right? He has this card that's half safe. 9, 5, 2, 9 is safe to 8, but it's not safe to 4. And he blocks that while still having this threatened 2. Akiyama blocks 2. And Dalamar had this option in 8, 9. Interestingly, though, again, Dalamar chooses to keep the more powerful cards for later and goes here. Interesting. So Akiyama has a lot of captures, right? Here, probably bad, right? Walks into a big combo, loses. Here, same thing, right? Do have the combo back, but you get comboed at the end and you lose. Okay, so hard to go in five. Uh, this card obviously doesn't really want to. You also have the capture in eight. And here, you're not walking into a devastating combo. I think this should lead to a tie. Something like this should be a tie. So that looks like it leads to a tie. Akiyama went for instead, I think, a really tricky move. He went here. And he was, you know, Dal here is setting up, you can go in five, but I have these counter moves in eight, right? I have a lot of combo potential against anything you do in five. Akiyama similarly noticed, I can make it tricky for you to go in five, right? Um, this card obviously doesn't want to go in five because it just locks in a card for uh, Akiyama. If this card goes in five, now you might think, ah, of course it's comboed this way, but this isn't enough. This isn't enough. This is just a tie. The winning move, this is the combo here, is here giving 9834 the combo in both two, 4 and 8. Now, either way, it combos and wins. So, a really nice idea of if they go 5, I see I have the combo in 4. Can I get the combo in 8 too? I can. I have the trap. Similarly, if 7567 seven lands here, you might think, aha, we have an easy same or an easy plus. But this combo's back just fine, right? We have eight. Can we set up to have four as well? Well, this would need a 10 facing up. We don't have that. But this needs a nine facing up. We do have that. So again, we have a trap, right? If Dalamar goes in either four or eight, you know, he has to move. Akiyama has the other one covered. So really clever way of making five this completely booby trapped square. Cannot touch five. On the other hand, there is another way to attack this. And Dalimar takes the plus wall in four. This is the winning move and the only winning move. And now we see, again, it's really hard to occupy five, right? Neither player has had a good time occupying five because the other has always had combos against it. And we can see if Akiyama does occupy five, he loses. If Akiyama goes in eight, this sets up a really fun plus in five but four is pretty dead. Uh, sorry, seven's pretty dead, so Dalimar can just take something. Of course, Dalimar does not want to fall for something like this when everything collapses. Um, this card in eight just doesn't do anything. You just lose. Uh, Akiyama ends up going in seven, which is probably the best try, but Dalimar just has a double capture and wins six four. So I hope you enjoyed these games. I thought they were all really interesting games. Uh, I probably should have spent a little more time on the first one because I found the formation on that really interesting. I love the move in six in the second game. I think the win against Turds is probably just like a perfect game of Triple Triad. Like there are other moves that were good, but I think every move he made is the best move, right? And there are lots of games where someone makes a bunch of good moves and they win or they play really nicely. But there aren't as many games where I think at each point you can just be like, yeah, that was the best move here. That was just the perfect move. There was no move that applied more pressure. There was no move that more kind of correctly spoke to the soul of the position. And so I thought that was the best overall game. 
and then this win over Akiyama, also really nicely played and incredibly clutch. And Twin Moons tragically did not end up holding on to win or tie that matchup, but this was a huge result for Dalimar. And honestly, like, I think Dalimar is a good player, but came as a real surprise because Akiyama is absolutely elite and Clan League is such a critical event. And Dalimar played great. I know he always really puts in the effort to prepare. And that's something a lot of us should do more of. And really paid off nicely here. Just a fantastic win. So those are the games. Uh, I hope they end up connecting to what I talk about, in the, what he talked about in the interview. We'll see. Because again, I recorded this in advance. Because I thought these were four great games to look at. Hope you enjoyed.